you know, our players, our uh, coaches, our fans, we're all disappointed because of the uh, cancellation of sports uh, because of the virus. But thank God we're alive. Uh, many folks have been, have fallen, um, over 100,000 Americans and more to come. You and I were talking like four months ago in Atlantic City, sports betting, happy as can be, a summer's gonna be here. Look at where we have evolved to. I wanna be in Atlantic City. I wanna be doing these things. I just hope we open up the safe way. Greatest things is, of my experience, is going to the rack at Rutgers with thousands of screaming fans when we, we get a three-pointer or, or get a dunk. That's part of the enjoyment of the game. So uh, sitting at home and watching the game uh, will not quite be that experience, but putting a little extra bet on it on the side will close that gap just a little bit. And that's why I believe sports betting is going to come back uh, and come back very strong. New Jersey was able to be the second destination to get full-fledged sports betting, uh, first being Nevada and New Jersey second. I was like, shocked actually so that was an obstacle they they're overcome though they each one had their own little niche and they were they were getting there then the pandemic hit oh boy um now look at this obstacle they have to overcome you know it was so hard to get sports betting passed in new jersey and finally they did uh we accomplished that hopefully we can accomplish now opening back up and doing everything safe in the right way also it's also going to going to be a challenge we'll get through it we've always gotten through everything as a country and um, sports will help us. Uh, it will help us fill in the gaps that uh, the virus has taken away from us, but it can't take away or fill in the gap of the lives that have been lost and our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to all of them and all those families because I don't believe anyone is immune to knowing someone who hasn't fallen because of the virus. New Jersey is a different animal. It all starts with Atlantic City. We have that sports betting rite of passage in our blood from when we were young. The city back then was, man, it was so exciting. Every casino was packed. There was action everywhere. There was just always this exciting energy that anything could happen here at any moment. All bets are off at one of Atlantic City's landmark casinos. The Showboat Casino closed its doors today after a The Trump sentence. Plaza Casino just told employees that it's shutting down. Gambling was once credited with helping revive Atlantic City, but now the industry appears to be struggling to survive. The resort town. The FBI has estimated that sports betting is a three to five hundred billion dollar a year operation. Why them? Why not us? Uh, since legalized sports betting, Two casinos have reopened. We've gained nearly 10,000 of the jobs that were lost. The casinos that were hurting before sports betting have had to hire more people. We have tellers, we have supervisors, we have managers, we have customer service reps. So if, as sports gambling becomes legalized in more states, we can open more sports books and ultimately create more jobs. In the New Jersey market for sports betting, interactive online gaming, I mean, it employs thousands of people at this point in the state of New Jersey. It's a significant economic driver. A new industry was born, right? A new billion dollar industry was born and with the stroke of a, of, of a pen of our Supreme Court justices. So. It was incredible. I think Atlantic City has a huge draw and it has a huge name. I think they can definitely, definitely succeed in this market for sure. I grew up in a gambling town. I grew up in a boardwalk town. Uh, everyone gambled. You, you gambled your way out of it, really. Poker games, blackjack games on the boardwalk, wheels of chance, pitching quarters behind a post office. We grew up with it. My father was taking me to racetracks when I was eight years old, nine years old. Uh, you know, they, they thought it was a harmless vice, fortunately for me. 
I actually found a way around that and, and made it my living where I can make money at it. It's a man cave. I don't expect it to be crazy. It's just a little, uh, little place to crash in, really. More important, you can bet. Right here from the safety of the house. You can bet on all the apps. I mean, Bill Krakenberger, professional sports better. Uh, New Jersey native, live in Las Vegas now. Travel back and forth to New Jersey all the time on the weekends when I can get a lot of volume down. Atlantic City opened up in 77. Yeah, Governor Brendan Byrne signed up all these casinos to open up in Atlantic City. Only Las Vegas had brick and mortar casinos. That was it. There was always underground shops though. I've been gambling underground shops in New York City since I'm a little kid. They always had those places in Chinatown, in the back of Mulberry Street, real stuff. That they were the real, real knock around after hour joints. Back then, they were ready for sports betting too. In the 1990s, Caesars in Atlantic City actually was ready for sports betting. They built a sports betting bar. They were ready, they had tellers that, and then one of the senators came in and 86'd it, and that was the end of it. They made it into a, a lounge. But sports betting was, was ready, and it, it took another 25 years for it to get here. It's here now though, it's full force too. It's everywhere you look. The biggest catalyst to legalize sports betting was the fact that everyone was doing it anyway. They were feeding organized crime rings. They were betting on offshore sites. And that money was going out of the state. We were losing money. We were losing jobs. And it just didn't seem right to me. I'm Ray Lesniak, former Senator Ray Lesniak, 40 years in the state uh, legislature who started and finished the uh, fight uh, to bring sports betting to New Jersey and to America. The fight to legalize sports gambling, though, is far from over. And joining me to discuss this is the man who wrote the bill, New Jersey State Senator Raymond Lesniak. Senator, thanks for being on studio with us. Well, nice, nice to be here. I was looking forward to placing a bet, but... Uh, <laughs> that was going to be my first question. Who are you going to be betting on tomorrow? But where do we stand with this? It took 12 years. I lost eight times in court before we finally won before the Supreme Court, and now we're reaping the benefits. People were saying that you have no chance. Well, first of all, I had to uh, amend the Constitution of the state of New Jersey to allow sports spreading, because our Constitution prohibited any new types of gaming unless it was approved by the voters. I got that through the legislature, and that passed overwhelmingly. Then I had to get legislation through the legislature. Then that was challenged by the leagues. I fought the NFL, the NCAA, National Hockey League, Major League Baseball. They kept losing back and forth to the Court of Appeals. Finally, we did get to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said. So the Supreme Court this morning in a 6-3 ruling saying that states can in fact legalize and regulate sports betting. So as you can imagine, there has been a flurry of- Ready to go out to play golf. I got the call. Forget about golf. I just got on the phone cheering, telling everybody that we won, we won, we won. It was a great moment. I placed the first winning bet in the state of New Jersey. Governor Murphy, who was the governor at the time that we won, cut in line. He's governor, governors do that. But he bet on Germany to win the World Cup. I bet on France. I collected that bet. I wasn't the first bet, but I did place the first winning bet. It was at Monmouth Racetrack. Same racetrack that I went with my dad and my mom, and I was able to place the first winning bet in New Jersey on a, a sporting event. Now that we have sports betting, we have two casinos that were closed that have reopened, Hard Rock and Ocean and the other casinos which were on the brink of closing are now expanding their operations, their, their investment in Atlantic City, thanks to sports betting. Okay, so we're here at FanDuel Sportsbook in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and this is the largest sportsbook in all of America. My name is Jacinta Hall, and I'm the lead supervisor at Candle Sportsbook in East Rutherford, New Jersey. In my family, sports has always played a huge role. My uncles, all athletes, my brother, my father, they played football, basketball, baseball, and then growing up, I played basketball as well. 
during a game here, it's super fun. From patrons screaming at the TV, cursing, yelling, jumping, dancing. Like, you just get all these reactions from all different types of people, and it's really a fun atmosphere to be in, especially during a big game, like a Super Bowl game or something of that nature. All righty. Um, this is where we take the majority of bets. Right here on our right, we have the self-service kiosk. Hey, Jared, hey, how's it going how today? Good, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. What's up, Shaq? How are you? Um, like I said, this is where we get the most bets. This is our main area here. As you can see, we have all these huge screen TVs up here, over here. You can sit and eat over there and enjoy the games. Um, follow me some more. Hey, Frank. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so here we have our cash at counter. This is where people can cash out their earnings from the app or where they can deposit money so they can play from their phone. Hey, Stu. This industry has helped New Jersey, among other states, with the amount of jobs created. I see sports betting just taking over, and it already is here but it just, we need to continue to legalize it in the rest of the other states and it, it's becoming really common. I like the fact that you get to celebrate your team winning or celebrate whatever you bet on and then you get money just to reward that. So it's just like a two for one right there. <laughs> So my dream is that if sports gambling gets legalized in Florida, maybe we could open a FanDuel beachfront sports book. That's ideal for me. I love beaches, I love the hot weather, I love Florida. And this ideal dream sports book would definitely have a bar <laughs> where we can serve drinks maybe, Mai Tais or something on the beach like that, and just TVs outside. That'd be super cool. May of 2018 was the day legalization of sports betting changed here. However, these casinos already knew because they're in with legislatures and they're in with their people, they knew it was coming. So they were preparing for it. These casinos were under major, major renovations. Now look at the money they put in. Look what the Hard Rock here in Atlantic City did. They spent 500 million to renovate the old Taj Mahal. Oceans Casino opened back up with a big, beautiful sports book. Uh, spent, you know, 20, 30 million dollars. Every casino in this town was prepared. They actually built uh, just at Bally's, the Wild West, beautiful sports book, probably my favorite, the big lounge chairs, $5 million just on screens. They were prepared for sports betting to be here in New Jersey. One thing they didn't realize, they didn't know that 85% of the bets were gonna be placed over the internet and not in their casino. They wouldn't have spent that much money on these beautiful big sports books. Yes, it's proven to us guys, we want to bet sports at home, sitting in our underwears, sitting around at the living room table. My name is Andrew Menino. I'm sports content manager here at PointsBet. I work in the sports analytics department. So this is our trading office here in Jersey City. We got guys working on today's soccer matches. We got guys working on the NBA for tonight. Uh, we got risk traders focusing on incoming bets and uh, pricing and making sure we're in line there. And we have content guys making sure everything's uh, appearing correctly on site. Somebody's in this office 365 days a year, 24 seven. We're always working, we're always at it. Uh, we're always monitoring the site, make sure things are feeding through and displaying correctly and making sure uh, betters can find what they're looking for. We're thinking about how many strikeouts Clayton Kershaw is gonna throw this year or how many home runs Alex Bregman's gonna hit. And then we'll do the math, we'll get it on site and put it out there available for people to bet on. I think for most betters, what they're looking for is easy access. And legalized sports betting in New Jersey allows people to easily and quickly sign up, get a bet in, get paid out, and not have to worry about what used to be sort of mysterious offshore sites that they don't really know anybody at and may or may not pay out on a winning bet. Now that money stays here, now that money gets in their bank account quickly and easily, and it allows people to just easily uh, sign up, get their bets in, and get their money back out. Paul Hannon, Vice President of Strategy and Retail here at PointsBet. 
online gaming and sports betting couldn't have come at a more perfect time and probably a little bit late, to be honest. Right now you're looking, New Jersey itself will be probably a $300 million revenue market, somewhere a little bit north of there, most likely. If I had any advice for our fellow operators in Atlantic City and a lot of you know friends that I have, it's lean into the opportunity, make good decisions, and, and, and make the best of it going forward here. People want to distract themselves from the, the norm. I truly believe that the entertainment factor um, will continue to grow in sports betting specifically. Um, there's a reason that the major media companies are beginning to opt in. You know, I think that they realize that this is the next generation of entertainment in the U.S. There is a, a, a ton of folks that, that wager every day in the illegal offshore market. Although sports betting, you know, legalized sports betting has had a great impact uh, to, to probably, you know, shave away um, share from the offshore market. Um, the reality is, is that the offshore market will never go away fully. So all we can do as a regulated operator is keep pushing responsible gaming messaging, keep allowing folks to get educated on the space, on the operators, you know, try to lean into the credibility factors that, that really lead to a safe gambling environment. This two, this two week losing streak got come to an end, good bro. Yeah. Any favorites today? Who you like? You gotta check the lines? Yeah, thank you, sir. You're welcome, bro. What's going on, big dog? Who are you pick yesterday? If I was a betting man, it was Fury. If I wanted to lose my money, Wilder. My name is Hank Davis, better known as Ace Money Bags, Big Bang <laughs> Hank for short. <laughs> I'm Jason, and Draft King, better known as ATF. Hot Atlanta, baby. From Atlanta. <laughs> All right, so you already know, man. Atlantic City, Draft Kings, you know what I'm saying? This is my second home. I call this my second office. First office is a strip club. We ain't going to get into all that. <laughs> so basically, what's going on now is we don't like to just donate our money. You know what I mean? So we actually like to take the time out and look at the games, look at the lines, see how much they move, compare that to what we see online. Act like we're real professional with it. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and look through these lines. Like I said, we got, we got three sports today. Um, well, two of the same sports, different leagues: college, NBA, and uh, my professional favorite, hockey. I don't lose, can't miss. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so nah. So we, we'll do that. We'll see who's out. We'll see who's in. We'll get some people that we trust that makes money in here. We'll get their opinion. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, we'll sit here and argue about his team versus my team and put yeah. a ticket together. Okay. Crazy, man. We would literally sit here for an hour or two before a game even freaking starts, man. And then you just gotta sit here and do what we do for 10 hours out of the damn day. Watch the game. He always holding out on me, man. There you go. Game. Got it. We good. You want to make sure it's good? All right, we good. Quick victory. Look, if you can pick games like that more often, man, we'll be rich around this piece, man. Hell yeah. So we're going to split it 50-50 or 60-40? Winner, winner, chicken dinner, ladies. Hello. 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 <laughs> Bounce time. Bounce time. Damn right. Listen, man, at the end of the day, all we got to do is keep doing it the way you're doing it. We're going to make money. We're going to be happy, and that's it. Let's just keep doing it, baby. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Hello. Bam. Uh, 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 uh. Money. Money. All right, check it out. So this is your cut. This is, this is my cut, I cut, and Hank's cut, and Ace cut. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Huh? Um, you, that's the one on 60 40. Oh, there you go. You, oh, matter of fact, you take that. Right. I'll take that. Okay, that's and then we'll just put it right back into it. All right, All right so we got to figure out what we're going to do next, man. What's the next thing we're doing?
not, Alex? Was there an over under? You can bet on anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally bet on anything. If, if you can bet on it, I've probably bet on it before. <laughs> So my name is Melissa Burr. I am a professional poker player, um, home based out of Atlantic City, Florida. My whole life, I've always loved sports. You know, I follow the NFL pretty, pretty hardcore. And even before the sports betting, I was always in every fantasy league. I was the only girl in the fantasy league. Like uh, for me, as a professional gambler, I'm always looking for ways to, you know, exploit the system. And when you talk about something so new and so exciting you know that they're gonna roll at the red carpet and try to hit the market super hard. And all I saw was dollar signs. I don't remember the first wager I had, but I know I waited until the Super Bowl to cash in on these bonuses. So DraftKings and FanDuel had a $500 free bet, you know. Uh, the year the the year New England won the Super Bowl, I think I had like 1,500 in worth of free bets that were that were basically guaranteed. You know, then if you lost it, you were, you could do it again. And that was spread out between eight different sites, and we just sent everything in on New England. Worked out fortunately, <laughs> but it was free. And if I had any advice for anyone, it would be get out there, find out what you can get. You don't have to keep betting, but at least take what they're willing to give you. All it takes is a little bankroll. You can have less than 10 grand, and there's no reason why you can't make two, 300 bucks a week for free without any risk. So it's a great time to be a sports better here in New Jersey. You turn on the TV now, and you listen to the commentators during an NBA game, and they're talking about the point spread and Will the Brooklyn Nets cover? Three years ago, none of that was going on. So you can definitely see how sports betting has affected like the, the sports industry. When I said this at the beginning, people thought I was crazy. When I said New Jersey will surpass Nevada eventually for gross volume per month, people said, ah, you're absolutely crazy. It took them all of four months to have a, a, a month that we actually, here in New Jersey, beat Nevada. The money they're making here for the state and the tax and the coffers. This is giant money. The average uh, stay in Atlantic City before sports betting was less than 10 hours. Now folks are staying for overnight, weekends, long weekends, during all times of the year. So it's breathed a new life into Atlantic City. The reality is, is that the focus in New Jersey right now is sports betting and there's nothing. It's a hyper focus, hundreds, if not thousands of folks have been able to get it, get jobs as a result of the expansion of online gaming and, and sports betting. That also requires skill sets. These are good jobs, you know, at the end of the day. I would bet on Atlantic City to be successful going forward in the future because I feel like they have made mistakes in the past. Now I've been in this industry for almost 20 years. I can see the changes that are being implemented and followed through with, you know, much better than they were historically in the past. Hopefully the owners and the management are starting to see that their competition uh, or what they're striving for is so close that they will, they will up their game in all aspects and all areas of gambling. But I think that they can do it. I think Atlantic City has a huge draw and it has a huge name. I think they can definitely, definitely succeed in this market for sure. Yes, I absolutely would bet on Atlantic City. I think it's a good bet. I think the future of Atlantic City is, has a bright outlook because of the things that's going on here now, the things they're doing now, the money they're putting back in, and uh, the redevelopment of the area and the redevelopment of the beach and the casinos. So I think Atlantic City is uh, it's still a hotspot. This town is back.